spend this time together. Uh, we are in a season, obviously, where lots of things are going on and where our patience is being challenged and for many saints, our faith is being challenged. Uh, I think it's a good time for us to just remember, uh, remind ourselves, rehearse within ourselves those things that we know. So we're gathering our thoughts around the 27th division of the book of Psalms today. Psalm 27. And uh, uh, around this little subject, for sure, for sure. And I wish you would indulge me, indulge me, and just say that to yourself, for sure, for sure. And say it like you're convinced of it, like it really is what you know and what you believe and where you stand, for sure. So we'll walk through the psalm and uh, perhaps highlight a couple things as we proceed. Just really great food. If you have your Bible handy, read it along with us. Make notes. Check little things right in the margin. Uh, make a note of things you'd like to go back and revisit at some point so that you can continually eat from this living word. Here's the word of God under this subject for sure. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Who is it that can unnerve me? Who is it that can cause me to uh, shake in my boots? And uh, who is it that will make me afraid, that will make me run, that will make me hide? I, no one, since I know that the Lord is my light and my salvation, when the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, here's what happened. They stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. There's the key word for the whole passage. Confident. That's why the subject is, I'm sure. In this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I would, will dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. David desired to be in the things of God, in the matters of God, in the word of God, in the dealings of God all his life. I pray that we are not letting distractions uh, put, draw us away from our time with the Lord and in the Lord, that we're not letting worry um, and lack of confidence pull us from our time with the Lord and in the Lord. It's more critical now than ever. I've had a couple of you to say to me that you aren't perhaps as studious as you were um, before this whole season, but now is the time. That's why the Lord was stuffing us and, and, and putting so much in us so that we could make it through this very season. Please grab your Bibles, grab your word, the word first, then read other things about the word secondarily, but read the word, meditate, speak to the Lord and listen as he speaks back to us. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the time of trouble, doesn't say trouble won't come, but he, David uh, is confident that in the time of trouble, God will hide him in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. Rocks generally don't move anywhere, right? So he's going to set me in a place that will not move. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies, the very ones who calculated my demise. The, David says the Lord is going to raise my head above theirs. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. As I see the hand of God, then I need to praise him. I need to thank him. I need to, need to give credit to, for him to him for my very survival, just from making it from day to day, for not being consumed by the things that are coming at me. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. 
When thou saidest, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek, for sure. Hide not thy face far from me, put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. He pleads his case. In other words, I absolutely need you, God. I can't make it without you. I'm totally dependent on you. Then he says this verse that is kind of interesting. When my father and mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Now, I know we, we generally take forsake to mean abandon, but there are times when the people who are most key to us really can't do us any good, whether it be father, mother, sister, brother, son, daughter, uh, whoever it is, sometimes those dearest to our hearts really can't do us any good. So when they uh, forsake me, when they can't remedy my situation, then the Lord will take me up. When my resources are exhausted, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O oh Lord. Man, oh man, oh man. I love students of the word of God, of the will of God, of the way of God. Teach me thy way, O oh Lord. I want to learn and to lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses have risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. Commit your way to the Lord. Your enemies then become enemies of God. Commit your way to the Lord. Those who can't stand you, those who are uh, uh, trying to develop devices against you, uh, they will turn. That will turn to nothing because they then have to deal with the Lord and not not you, not me. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I know goodness is ahead. I know heaven is ahead. But David says, I had fainted. I would have quit. I would have fallen by the wayside unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That's the here and now. Then he concludes, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord, I say to you, for sure, God bless you.